So this is a situation where we, we ordered pipes. Uh, a lot of these things never run quite smoothly. We ordered pipes and some of them turned up. So um, we want to put underfloor heating in that section as well. But we need to get the pipe from there to there where the manifold is. Which meant we were going to need to cross this. So it's what we've done is we've just put another uh, bit of shuttering in here. And we're going to cast the slab over that side. And then this will actually leave open. So when we get the pipes in, we can run them from there through this back here. And we can then fill that screed in. Now, this is a fairly typical example of what happens on site. We've been, we were caught out on this. But it's, um, it shows a way in which you can get around the problem. There are actually going to be cupboards running all the way through here. So um, it isn't going to be uh, an issue having a brake line at this point. It's always hard to give precise uh, water content into mixes because sands will come in um, containing a, a, a varying quantities of water. So um, this one we've actually laying just that little bit wetter than we'd normally do it because uh, it is going to be a polished floor. So we're going to float this up so it needs to be able to pull the fat up in the polishing process. I think it's very easy to underestimate the skill and the, the, the eye and the feel um, of how you do something like this. Um, they make it look very easy because they're experienced and it's about placing and not overworking yourself um, or the material really. So minimum um, tools, uh, so you can see they've got this um, flat edge rake for dragging it out and then floating with either a wooden or, the, or a poly float. So a wooden or a poly float like this is textured. So as they're drawing it over, it's drawing a certain amount of fat up, but it doesn't suck too much fat up. So the idea is it just compresses it, floats it, helps with uh, taking out any shrinkage, but just does the initial levelling. You wouldn't use a steel trowel over that because the steel trowel would tend to suck too much moisture to the surface and then you'd end up with sort of case hardening. So this is idea of just compaction and, and, and levelling. So as the mix is brought in, it's going to be placed fairly carefully. So when they come back to float it in, they're not wading through a huge quantity of material and they're just working their way with bite-sized pieces and working their way out and that way you don't end up moving too much material about. Now they're going to rake it into place, give it an initial levelling. And once that's done, as you've seen, just a little spray of water over the top and float it in with the, the poly float. I think what's really nice about it is there is a, you know, you, you'd think this is about pouring it in a hole and floating it up, but actually everything requires a system and there are nice systems about this and there are roles of all, everybody's got the play, you know, filling the barrel, making sure it's not too heavy, bring it onto site, making sure that protection's right, making sure you're not splashing it, placing the barrel in the right place, gently raking out and making sure it's um, uh, got that initial level spot marking it you know there's a great bit of telepathy and, and working together that, that that's going on um, to produce a crisp and efficient um, system so you see as this barrel has been brought in it is rolling over the pipe that's fine it's not going to cause harm like that but where it's being tipped up at the end of the bucket making sure that it doesn't go on the pipe because obviously the weight of the material in the, in the bucket stands more of a chance of crushing it. So just be mindful of where you're placing it 
and not causing any damage to the pipes. So you can see how that material has sort of stood up. It's, a, it's of a consistency where it, uh, it, it stands up a little bit. It doesn't slump, uh, so it doesn't run. And that's, uh, that's a perfect consistency for laying this sort of floor. So coming in here, it's being raked out. And then the edges, where you've got this day joint, making sure that you get good, um, full, even depth going in there and it's not creating um, a cavity behind it and it's also linking into this bit of um, mesh which we've put in just to link the two slabs together. So tamping it in like that, make sure it fills right out. 